70% of the children in India were really not getting any semblance of creative education. You know, if we are going to make a difference, you've got to go where the need is the most. So why not focus on rural children? So with that in mind, we acquired a barren piece of wasteland, 172 acres, in a backward area in southern India, a place called Kupam two and a half hours by road from Bangalore. But the bad news was we ran out of money. So what do we do? Now we came up with an interesting idea. We said, look, why don't we wait for the money to build the buildings on the campus? Let's go out to the villages and the children. How about a mobile lab? So a friend of mine loaned us a second-hand vehicle. Uh, Dr. Iyengar, the former Atomic Energy Commission chairman, arranged for an organization in Bombay to provide us a trunk full of very low-cost science experiments which at that time cost no more than the equivalent of eight dollars today. We hired our tractor driver, told him uh, to stop being the tractor driver, that he was going to be our new science instructor and sent the mobile lab into the villages. The response was phenomenal. Children loved it. Initially, I'm told they ran away thinking he was a missionary. But then when they heard that, he was actually going to teach them science in a very interesting, hands-on, experiential way, they came flocking back. And so, all of a sudden, we had this mobile science van that began to grab attention. Somebody in the government in Karnataka read about it in the papers, called me and said, hey, this sounds really interesting, can you uh, do it for the rest of the state of Karnataka. And so slowly we began to work with the government of Karnataka and spread these mobile labs across the state. But mobile labs are mobile, so we said let's have a hub and spoke model. Let's have stationary science centers where children and teachers can come and do work hands-on and learn and have these mobile labs go to more remote areas. And that model became very successful. And today we have nearly 200 mobile science vans and about 60 science centers across 19 states in India. Meanwhile, I ran into an ecologist who came and saw our land and said, yeah, it's all very ba barren and overgrazed land, but guess what? The soil is quite interesting. If you give me an opportunity, I think I can revive the ecosystem of the land. So we began to fence the land, we began to protect the land from cattle grazing and slowly the land began to express itself. A lots, of, lots of dominant species under the earth began to come out. And, and just a year ago the Indian Institute of Science wrote a study on the regeneration of the Agastya campus, the eco-regeneration. And children and teachers come from all over to learn about the medicinal properties of plants, herbs, about soil conditions, water harvesting, all the stuff that people talk about today as being essential for human survival and success. In terms of developing the campus, I ran into one of India's wealthiest people, a gentleman called uh, Rakesh Junjunwala, a stock market investor. And he got interested in the idea of the mobile science fan. And he said, you know, Ramji, I can see them all over India. It sounds like a powerful idea. So he began to fund initially one, two, and three mobile labs. And then he said, look, why don't I help you develop your campus? And so money began to flow into the campus, and gradually the campus began to evolve in very different, interesting ways. We dropped the idea of creating a school. Instead, it became a school for schools, a resource center where children from hundreds and thousands of schools come to our campus and learn hands-on in a very experiential way. It's a public laboratory and it's very integrated. We have centers for science, math, chemistry, physics, astronomy, possibly the world's largest suspended planetary system. We are building a fantastic new interactive biodiscovery center and we're also planning something in aviation. The campus has become a truly creative lab, a crucible, 
for getting people to think differently. What do we mean by thinking and acting differently? We said, look, there are four or five behavioral shifts that we have to trigger. The first shift is from yes to why. The second is from looking to learning to observe. The third is from being very textbook bound to being more hands on. The fourth is from being very passive to learning to explore. And finally, and most important, the shift from fear to confidence. He said if we can trigger these shifts through our hands-on interventions, then we would have made an indelibly positive contribution to Indian education and Indian society. So I remember years ago going to a village school and uh, running into this girl. We have a program where we teach children to teach children. It's called the Young Instructor Leader Program. We work with over 12,000 children uh, under this program and they end up winning science prizes at the national level. So at the school, somebody pointed out this girl, young Uma, who was one of our young instructor leaders. So I went up to her and asked her, I said, Uma, what impact, if any, have we had on her? And I thought she would say, I'm doing very well in science and in my tests and so on and so forth. She didn't say that. She looked at me and said, Sir, I'm not afraid to speak anymore. And that's when I realized that the real value of our intervention was in this behavioral shift in raising one's self-belief and self-esteem. And that's really the power of it. Now, it turned out that Uma did extremely well in her studies and ended up being the first girl from her village to join an engineering college. So all of that happened. But the underlying change was really one of self-belief. And that's really what the Agastya Foundation is about and should be about. So over the years, we had created these mobile labs and science centers, and then we said, look, you know, is there a cheaper version of the mobile science van? And we came up with the idea of a lab on a motorcycle. And in fact, it won the Google Global Impact Challenge Award in 2013, a version of it called the Teclabike. One day I remember in 2009 visiting a village at night where we run these night mobile lab visits and uh, usually the entire community, the children, the parents, grandparents gather around the mobile lab to experience the thrill of it. I climbed a little house, the rooftop and I was taking pictures when I noticed a young girl uh, surrounded by three kids and she was teaching them from one of our models a model of a food chain. So I climbed down and went up to her and I was rather curious and I said, hey, uh, what's your name? And she said, Vasanta, why aren't you with the mobile lab? What are you doing here? And she said, because I like to teach. I'm teaching. And I said, really? And she took me to her home and showed me a blackboard and a chalk and said, I teach her every night. And that gave me an idea. I thought, why don't we launch Operation Vasanta? in hundreds, possibly thousands of villages across India. Let's find a young person like Vasanta, girl or boy, a school student or a college student, from that village, train them, get them juiced up, and give them the support and materials they need to run a night village school. And we're doing that in 400 villages across India. The Operation Vasanta program is almost zero technology but it's very, very low cost and extremely high impact. The student goes through transformation. The parents are very happy that the children are studying and not wasting their time watching television. The children tell us that if they went home, the parents would give them chores to do and they'd much rather sit in an Operation Vasanta class. I came up with a phrase some years ago to summarize this. We said, look, we're sparking curiosity nurturing creativity and instilling confidence. Another way to explain this is to say we are disseminating the spirit of ah, aha and haha which you can see on this tree. When you see something counterintuitive, different, beautiful, you tend to go ah and that's very important because that stimulates your mind and then you wonder why does this happen? How does it happen? Could it happen differently? As you begin to ask these questions and you begin to explore and you try to find out, if you do find out, you might find out in a second, 
a day, a week, a month, a year, a lifetime, you experience the famous aha effect. So ah and aha are profound ways of learning. Ways of learning that are completely forgotten and de-emphasized in most education systems around the world. But there is a third secret and that is about having fun, enjoying what you're doing. And that's the ha-ha effect, right? Because fun and humor increase retention, they improve performance, and they raise your commitment. So ah, aha, and ha-ha is really what Agastya is about. And this is very important because communicating your mission to an organization, to your people at the front lines, Agastya has over 800 teachers today, including the Operation Vasanta volunteers, possibly 900 of them. They have to understand your mission in a way that reaches them not only here, but here, so that they bring their passion to bear when they do their work. And ah, aha, ha, ha is a simple and yet almost universally relatable way of understanding what your work is all about. One of India's greatest presidents was Dr. Abdul Kalam. And one day he called me and said, you know Ramji, I would like to launch a couple of mobile labs in one of India's most backward areas in northeastern uh, India. And I said yes, and he himself funded the acquisition of these vans, and Agastya funded their operational costs. And that led to a lot of visibility for the foundation, simply because the most revered president of India, Abdul Kalam at the time, took interest in this. Now why would Abdul Kalam have been interested in uh, sponsoring a couple of mobile labs in a backward part of northeastern India? Because he believed that this was a big idea. It was a good idea, but it was also a big idea that had the potential to scale. Along with Kalam came a lot of scientists and engineers who benefited our organization tremendously. So the network began to grow because of the way we thought and acted. So think big. As we've, I've seen again and again in Agastya, what I had planned for initially didn't pan out but something more interesting and bigger actually panned out. And that's because I and my colleagues were prepared to be flexible, to experiment, to discover, and not get rigid. We decided to flow with the way things were going. So that is really very, very important. Persist, go with the flow, don't give up.